everyone, Maya here from My Storybook, and I am so excited that you are here to join me this May for My Storybook's Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month special read aloud event, where every weekday this month, I'm going to be sharing a new interactive read aloud featuring a book with Asian characters or a book that was created by an Asian illustrator or author. There are so many amazing books in the lineup this month, my friends. So if you are curious to see what else we are reading this month, you can go ahead and check out my blog post in the link description below, where it will tell you all of the books we are reading this month and on what day so that you can make sure that you get to listen and tune in to your favorites. I am so grateful to all the authors and publishers who are collaborating and allowing me to share these stories with all of you this month. It is so important to share Asian voices and so important to share different Asian cultures, traditions, and stories that just show Asian characters in everyday life events. Now, for today's interactive read aloud, we are going to be reading about a Chinese family, a Chinese immigrant family who just came to America and their adventures out on the sea. So if you are ready to get started, my friends, let's jump right in. Give me a double thumbs up. Excellent. Let's get started. The title of today's interactive read aloud is Yao Bai and the Egg Pirates, written by Tim J. Myers and illustrated by Bonnie Payne. So that means that Tim J. Myers wrote all of the words. They are the author. And Bonnie Pang drew all of the pictures. She is the illustrator. And this book was published by West Margin Press, which means that they helped put the book together, make it into a story for all of us to share. And I want to say a big thank you to them for letting me read aloud this story and share it with all of you. Now, if we take a look at the cover here, what do you see going on? Right, I see a little boy here and it looks like they're on a ship, a boat, a fishing boat. And I see, I see some animals in the water. What do you see? A whale. I see over here some land, maybe an island. It looks like they're looking over out at something. My friends, have you ever been on a boat before? Ooh. Well, this is called Yao Bai and the Egg Pirates. <gasps> Pirates, I wonder what is going on with these eggs and pirates, huh? Hmm, what do you think, my friends? What do you think is going to happen in this story? Huh. Well, before we get started, I wanted to give you a little bit of background information because this story talks a lot about a Chinese immigrant family, like we mentioned before. And when the Chinese immigrants first came to America, a lot of them started to live in these little fishing villages in San Francisco or the Bay Area, which is a city in California along the coast near the ocean. So a lot of the immigrants who came made money by fishing for fish or shrimp, and they were really successful at it. They were catching a lot of fish and shrimp and making enough money to survive. But because they were so good at it, a lot of people started getting angry at them, blaming them for taking all the fish and blaming them that it was their fault that they couldn't catch fish because the Chinese immigrants were taking them all. Now, does that sound fair to you? Like it's their fault that other people can't catch fish and shrimp? Just because they're good at something doesn't mean they're stopping you from doing anything. Well, the Americans and people who already lived in California got upset at them. And these Chinese immigrants faced a lot of racism where people were not very nice to them just because they were Chinese and because they thought that Chinese people were taking their food away from them. Even though fish and shrimp belong to the nature, right? Doesn't belong to anyone. So we're going to read this story and you're going to see that Yao Bai and his family are going to have some interactions sometimes when they meet some people who aren't so very nice to them, who are racist towards these Chinese immigrants. And when we get to it, we'll talk about it and see what's going on. All right, I think we're ready to get started. Let's begin. So here is our title page as the title of our book, Yao Bai and the Egg Pirates, our author and illustrator. And down here, it says who published it, West Margin Press. Yao Bai was dreaming of whales when a gentle hand woke him. Get up now, son, his mother said. Today is a new adventure. You sail to the islands. Ooh, that sounds exciting, my friends. Have you ever been to an island? What is an island, do you know? An island is a land that's surrounded on all sides by water. So it's a smaller piece of land. If there's water all around it, that is an island. So Yao Bai is going on an adventure today. Rubbing his hands for warmth in the dawn chill, Yao hurried to the beach. 
There his father and uncle were preparing their small boat. Out across the shallow bay, sunlight flooded the world. So it's morning time. It's a little bit chilly like it is in the morning. After years of famine and wars, famine means when there's not a lot of food, a lot of people are starving. After years of famine and war, Yao's family had crossed the ocean from China to the Gold Mountain, their name for America. So Yao Bai and his family are from China, and they are coming to America, the Gold Mountain. Yao had been sad to leave China, but sadder still that they saw no whales during their long journey across the ocean. Now they lived in a fishing camp nestled in upper San Francisco Bay, north of the city. So Yao and his family used to live in China. Now they live in California and San Francisco and near the bay, near the ocean. And it sounded like Yao really wanted to see this one animal. What animal did he really want to see? A whale. The boy from next door came running. Going shrimping, Yao? No, Quan, Yao said. We're sailing out on the ocean to the islands where seabirds lay eggs. To collect them for all those hungry gold miners. We'll make a fortune. Yao, we need you, his father said sharply. Yao ran to help. So where are they going? They're not going shrimping or fishing. They're going to get <coughs> eggs to give to. Did you hear who they're giving them to? Gold miners. Back then, my friends, there were people mining for gold. That means people were searching in the waters, in the streams, to find gold that was in the California rivers at the time. So they're thinking that they can sell these eggs to the gold miners so the gold miners can eat them. What about the pirates, Quan asked. They might steal your eggs. <gasps> our fishing tax is due and we must send more money to our family in Guangdong. Miners pay a lot for eggs. As for pirates, we'll just have to take our chances. So it sounds like even though there might be pirates, they really need this money right now. They have to pay their taxes and they have to send money back home to their family who still lives in China. Sounds like they help them by sending money they make back to China. Yao's mother came running. Don't forget to wrap Pu Tai's belly for luck, she called. Yao's uncle laughed, but they each held the small statue of the god. As Yao rubbed, he prayed silently. Give us good fortune and please keep pirates away. Mm. This little statue that rubbing its belly for good luck. When you return, his mother said, I'll mix the eggs with shrimp. She winked at Yao. Mmm, shrimp with eggs sounds delicious. Shrimp foo young, my favorite, he cried. <gasps> sounds like shrimp foo young is what you call eggs mixed with shrimp, a Chinese dish. Soon they dragged the boat into the low surf and set their sail. Before long, they rounded the Marin headland and made for the open ocean. Yao gazed across the water at San Francisco with its house-covered hills and the forest of ship masts crowding its piers. Current, wind, and tide moved them quickly out of the bay. The morning land breeze was behind them and the seas were gentle. To the west, they could see the islands, the Farallons, 26 miles away, their stony points clear against the blue horizon. Oh, so it looks like a beautiful day out. Yeah, his father said, we have to watch for pirates. Stay alert. Yes, father. Yao shivered. Why do you think he shivered? Right? Maybe if you're a little nervous, you might shiver because you're scared. I hope they don't see pirates. But what do you think? Do you think they will? Maybe because the title said Egg Pirates. And now here they are at the island, my friends. And what do you see? What do you notice on the island? <coughs> wow. That's a lot of birds and eggs, right? When they reached the main island, the sun was high overhead. We only want mere eggs, Yao's uncle said. The shells are thick and hard to break. The birds fly off when humans come, leaving the eggs unprotected. And the eggs are so big, one can feed three people. <gasps> that must be a giant egg, my friends. How big do you think that egg is if it can fit three people? Show me with your hands. Yao, his father said, you gather near the boat where it's safer. We'll go higher. Soon Yao was scrambling over the rocks, filling his basket, admiring the graceful shape of the speckled eggs. In a few hours, their boat was full and they set sail for home. The eggs clicked gently against each other with the rocking of the hull. So there they are. They got all the eggs. They're heading home. Successful trip. Mm. Oh, but what do you think they're pointing at way off at the distance? What do they see? What do you think? Who do you think is in that boat? 
For a time, they watched the land grow larger as the west wind drove them on. Yao was getting sleepy when something caught his eye. Sails, he yelled, pointing east. His father jumped up. Pirates, Yao asked fearfully. His uncle nodded. All that work for nothing, Yao's uncle added, shaking his head. Why do they say all that work for nothing when they see the pirates? <laughs> I think the pirates might take all of their eggs. Yao looked at their precious cargo. Suddenly, an idea came to him. We can hide the eggs. Where, his uncle asked. We couldn't hide anything on such a small boat. In a rush, Yao explained his plan. So what do you think Yao's plan is? Where are they going to hide these eggs on such a small boat? Hmm, let's see. I never would have thought of that, said his uncle with a laugh. Even Yao's father smiled. They quickly got to work. What do you think they're up to? Hmm. The pirate boat was still half a mile off when they finished. Not an egg could be seen. Now, Yao's father said, we pretend to fish. So they're going to pretend to be fishermen like they never got any eggs. Let's see what happens. Do you think their plan's going to work? Hope so. When the larger boat drew up, Yao could see hard-looking faces. Chinaman, a sailor called out. What are you doing here? Yao saw his father wince angrily at the hated word and noticed how his uncle's jaw tightened. So Chinaman was a mean way to call someone who was Chinese. So this guy, this pirate, is shouting Chinaman to this family here. And they're feeling really upset, right? Because it, it's a really mean way to call someone who is Chinese. Fishing, Yao's father answered in English. Just fishing, the man asked suspiciously. Not much else to do out here, Yao's uncle said. The man glared. You giving me lip, boy? So that means, are you giving me attitude? Are you trying to be smart? No, said Yao's uncle, looking straight into the man's eyes. Ease up, Jeffries. An older man emerged from behind a pile of baskets. He looked over their boat carefully. So, how would you describe these pirates? <laughs> Not very nice, right? And pretty mean to these other people. Why don't you cross on over and make sure they're telling the truth, he said quietly. Jeffries gave a nasty smile. Ooh, a nasty smile. Well, what do you think is going to happen, though, if he comes onto their boat? Do you think he'll find the eggs? Uh, but just as he lifted his leg to step onto the boat, a great watery whoosh filled the air. <gasps> what? What is going on? Uh, when Yao looked up, he thought his heart would stop. Uh, what do you think made that loud sound? Oh, uh, my friends, what <laughs> is going on here? Oh my, a giant whale, an immense humpback whale, its dark skin specked with white barnacles, lifted itself high out of the waves. Then it slumped sideways, falling back with a huge splash that left both boats rocking madly. Oh, so the pirate was just about to step onto their boat when what happened? So you think the pirate's going to be able to get onto their boat now? Not with all those waves rocking and splashing because of this humpback whale. And I remember that. What was Yao dreaming about at the beginning of the book? Do you remember? Whales. Remember, he really wanted to see a whale and now there's a whale. The men grabbed for something to hang it onto as the boats pitched dangerously close to each other. Finally, the rocking eased. We don't need no damage to our boat, the pirate boss said. They ain't got eggs. Let's clear out. He stared hard at Yao's father. And we don't need your kind around here, understand? His heart thumping, Yao watched the big boat pull away. What do you think he meant when he said, we don't need your kind around here anymore? He was being mean, right? He was being racist, what we call when someone is mean to someone just because of what ethnicity or race they are, who they are. So he was being mean to them just because they were Chinese and saying, we don't need any more Chinese people around here. That was a very mean pirate. Very rude. Once the pirate sails disappeared, Yao helped haul in their nets. As their eggs rose dripping from the water, Yao laughed with joy. <gasps> so where were their eggs? They were hiding them underwater, pretending they were fishing. <laughs> the eggs felt cool to touch as they lowered them gingerly into the hull. Only three were broken. Gulls screeched and dove as Yao's uncle threw the shells overboard. So 
so they only lost three eggs. That's pretty good, right? Better than losing all of them to the pirates. Good thing we rubbed Pooh Tai's belly, said Yao's uncle. It brought us luck after all. Yao did too, said Yao's father, smiling. I'm proud of you, my son, because Yao had an excellent idea, right? Soon they tied up at the wharf in the city and Yao's father sold the eggs, stuffing more money than Yao had ever seen into his worn purse. Keeping a few eggs for themselves, they sailed home. Oh, what a success. So look at, I'm looking at this picture and what do you notice going on here? Yes, he's got his money in his wallet and notice how he's carrying the eggs. He uses this like branch with the baskets tied on the end and balances it on his shoulders to help carry things. It's a cool way to carry something. Oh, and what's going on here? Looks like they returned home and they're all sitting down with their family and friends on the floor around the fire, enjoying oh, some eggs, eating some rice with their eggs, maybe. They've got their chopsticks, their bowls. As they neared the beach, all the families came running. The twilight was soon full of the mouth-watering smell of shrimp foo young. <gasps> so shrimp with eggs? Sitting around a fire, everyone ate till they could eat no more and listened to the story of Yao's delicious trickery ten times over. They wanted to hear it over and over again. It's a good story. Then they talked and laughed till the moon was high. What a great way to end the day, surrounded with your family, eating together, laughing, telling stories. It was late when Yao finally dropped into bed, happy and exhausted. When you woke this morning, his mother said, tucking him in, did you ever think this day would be so wonderful? It was wonderful, Yao murmured. I saw a well, he yawned. Then he slept, a bit of shrimp foo young still clinging to his lip. You see the little shrimp foo young right there? Wow, that must have been a delicious meal. And he had such an adventurous day. The end. Over here, you'll see some notes where the author talks more about the Chinese immigrants, the egg pirates, about selling eggs, about how Chinese immigrants faced racism. So if you want to pause here on this page and read it a little bit more to get some more details, you can. But otherwise, my friends, that brings us to the end of this story. Wow, what an exciting adventure this was with Yao Bai and his family and the egg pirates and their adventure getting some eggs. Yao Bai had some great ideas. What was one of your favorite parts of this story? Right? Yeah, I loved Yao Bai's idea about hiding the eggs in the nets underwater so it looked like they were fishing. That was so clever. And it was so amazing that that whale came up and helped them out too. That was pretty lucky. Good thing they did rep Pujai's belly, right? The lucky belly. I also think this story is important for helping us see how some people were racist towards Chinese immigrants back then, right? And still now today, Asian Americans face a lot of racism with people saying not so nice things about them, some people hurting them even just because they're Asian. And remember, as people, our job is to be kind to everyone and to get to know people first before making judgments or being mean to someone. You always want to start interacting and talking to someone from a place of kindness. That is how we create a future and a place where everyone can be truly free to be happy and to live the life that they really want to live. Okay, my friends. Well, I hope you enjoyed this interactive read aloud and I hope you join me tomorrow for our next reading adventure. Remember, there are new interactive read alouds every weekday this month to celebrate Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So thank you for joining me on this month-long reading advent. But until next time, my friends, I hope you subscribe to my Storybooks YouTube channel to follow along with all of our new reading adventures. If you want to share with me anything about your own reading adventures, please reach out to me on any of my social media channels. They can all be found there down below on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. I am always there. Please reach out to me. I love to hear from you. Well, my friends, that brings us to the end of today's read aloud, though. So until next time, happy reading. Mm -hmm.